Hello and welcome back. We are playing Victoria 3 as Great Britain, aka as Victoria herself, who is the current leader. Um, last episode we had a massive war in the Middle East that kind of just resulted in a bit of a status quo. It was versus both Russia and France. We're not quite strong enough to really clap two great powers at once and we also had a native uprising and some we were finishing up a war with Spain. We also managed to, you know, clap Spain down to size. And so Spain should be, if they're not, if they're currently a great power, they will be decaying out of it, and they are not currently a great power. So we will look to, you know, try and pull them into our market in a long-term sense. This is kind of what we're going to do, but for now, we'll just leave them at B. We might even just puppet them straight up if we decide we want to run to 1k infamy. Um, but this is uh, turning the quarter to go to 1k infamy. We're a bit far from that right now. What I'm going to talk about now is we are currently trying to get Brazil in the market. If we take a look... Um, they're kind of close to accepting, and one of the ways you can pull them in is increasing the volume of trade in the market. So what you can do is you can go to the Brazilian market, and uh, I just wanted to talk about this a little bit, and just look at all the expensive goods that they have, and make a point of exporting to them the expensive goods. Now they have expensive uh, wood, and we have really expensive wood as well, but we can export to them porcelain, for example, and this will increase the volume of trade, which will make it easier to pull them in the customs union. So why don't we export some porcelain paper and clothes to them, which are the finished goods, and look to see if there's any type of um, unfinished goods that we would want. So clothes. Hmm. We don't have the, the light-up thing. Porcelain and paper. We, of course, uh, don't know our alphabet, so we don't know where they are. Porcelain, paper, and this will increase the trade route volume, which makes them more likely to accept. Um, they're not close enough that we will just got an auto accept type of thing, but what do they have cheap here? They have cheap booze, relatively speaking. I'm not sure we can import it. Uh, I don't think it's cheap enough for us to import. They have really cheap ammo. I suppose we could import the ammo from them, uh, but we will not sit on that for now, and we will see that the uh, number, the volume of trade should go up won't be enough to get them in the customs union, but it will help out a little bit. What we really need is for them to get an obligation. Once we have an obligation to them, we can absolve that obligation in order to invite them to the customs union. We could also owe them an obligation, in which case they will pull us into a defensive pact, most likely, with that obligation, but no one really attacks Brazil ever, so this is not too big a deal. It would just mean that we have to have more influence just tied up in Brazil. I think we don't want to do that, but this is something that we could do. Right now, we're kind of looking for a war that doesn't take very much... Uh, what map mode do we have on here? Okay. Uh, right now, we're looking for a war that doesn't take too much infamy um, that we can declare once this whole business gets resolved here. And um, really tempted to go after Trucal Coasts, but the problem is if we look in the strategic region map mode uh, and we look at Arabia, we have Russia and France in there, and they are not going to abide by us taking the Trucal Coasts, so we will have to look someplace where those two are not present. Um, which is a bit unfortunate, but like, for example, we could go after Booligan. I know we have some people we can maybe annex, so for example, we can look to annex Cape Colony. Let's start damaging relations. Granada, we still have the truce with, so we cannot annex them. We cannot I annex Argentina. Um, so, the, the annexing of a, a previous subject is always really cheap. Um, so what we might do is we might open the Japanese Shogun market. If we look at, click the strategic regions map mode and zoom in on Japan, we will see it's just great Shing and us. Um, it's important to note that a big part of why that is, is we have all the colonization here. Russia also often goes for the colonization here, but since they didn't get any of Sakhalin or Hokkaido, they don't have a natural interest in the region. So going after both Sakhalin and Hokkaido allows you to put your finger in uh, Japan's pie later on in the game without getting too much, uh, oh, gross. We'll just take the minus 15% enactment chance. Really, uh, frustrating, but of course we are trying to pass it through the industrialists being in government and opposing it, so we are going to get a lot of these negative events. P passing proportional taxation is generally difficult. We did get a little bit lucky because we have this party that, uh, Last episode, we managed to get all three of these powerful, all three of them, almost all, uh, we'll actually snip at this here, um, mostly happy with us. And so this is a big game because these are the three best interest groups. And so when you can get these guys all happy with you, um, you get really, really strong bonuses. And, you know, you get the plus workforce and 
manufacturing industry's throughput, which is huge. You get plus migration attraction, that's get big. The te society tech cost is also nothing to sne sneeze at. And production costs, what we are missing out on is capitalist investment pool contribution, but hopefully we can get that back up once we pass proportional taxation. And this is a lot of this is on the back of like what we did the very first episode, which was take the Forbidden City, which is giving us authority and legitimacy from including the head of state and government. The legitimacy from including the head of state and government is allowing us to stay in the righteous band, which is allowing us to get a lot of loyalists relative to the radicals with kind of not too much cost. You know, we're running relatively high taxes and still having this being in this range, which is generally hard to do. And you decide you're done with this war, so we will annex you. Happy day. We will make sure we are... Actually, I think that, if I'm not mistaken, all of these states have the nasty, nasty malaria. Severe. Severe. So we will not colonize any of these. Instead, what we will do is we will open up the Japanese shogunate's market, uh, which will bring them off of... Uh, what's it called? Isolationism. Great Shing might join. Uh, in which case, we're kind of... We would not mind fighting Great Shing. I don't think that they join. I think that Japan just backs down as well. I don't think we need to mobilize anyone, but just in case, we'll, ma we'll mobilize Hugo. I love this name. Um, uh, that should put him at minus 75 fearful, so as long as, you know, uh, China doesn't join, which I don't think they do, they should just back down here, and we open their market kind of as a free little war that we can declare, and we will need to think about what the next war we want to be is after this. Um, we do want to make sure... It's, so it has to be a low infamy war, and we also want it to be uh, not in a place where we will get a pile on from France because we have been keep on getting that. We don't have a puppet. We don't have a truce with them anymore. I guess it just expired because we have negative relations, and we would like to annex them as a general heuristic. So we might do that. Uh, we also put a bunch of wood in the queue because we've been running a, a deficit on this and we are finally bringing the prices down quite a bit. And we put it in the queue over here in the uh, homeland regions, which we are trying to get migrants to come to. Let's add some iron as well. Iron is one of our bigger expenses. Great Shing sides with the Shogunate. So let's just take a look at how likely they are. They are now cocky. Come on, my brother. So we will mobilize all the generals. And we will move guys around a little bit. So, uh, I hate getting this event, or not event, but the petite bourgeoisie uh, give bureaucracy for middle managers, and when you lose it, it's really annoying because you suddenly are running a deficit, you're like, hey, who turned the lights out? Uh, but of course, no one turned the lights out except for just the system of the game, so we will just add a few admins, and we will... <clears throat> Have a little bit of think of where we want our guys to be on the front. I think what we want is we want... Let's put Roderick Black over here. Let's put Hugo here. And let's put these two guys here. Actually, we'll put this guy on the same front as Hugo and look to push this way mainly. Because I think that China HQ... Yeah, it's going to be China HQ is going to be... Oh, we gotta put a guy here, so we'll put the 40 stack there. And now, since this war is likely to pop off, because they have a stronger... It even says that they're stronger. I don't think that they are, but maybe they sorted out their PMs quite a bit for Ingrate Shing. But we will look to add war goals here, and we will mainly be liberating countries, because we don't want to... We don't want to accrue more infamy here. Or we want to accrue max 5, which taking any state from China is going to be 22 infamy. Um, and so, we'll look to liberate a lot of these. Oh, it looks like they annexed Shandong at some point, so we can liberate Shandong again. Uh, let's go for Formosa. Yeah, that's a good one. Do Formosa for the memes. And also Uyghurstan for the memes. And then we we'll demand war reps from Xing. And then since no other country can join or do anything here, I guess we revoke the claims on Beijing or revoke the claims on Sakhalin. 
Uh, this way, it is easier to do diplomacy with Japan in the future, because we want to Diplo puppet them. Uh, because it takes a lot of infamy to aggressively puppet them, so this will be good. Not the best, like, not the biggest, like, libs here, but, um, it's fine. But, 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 I think we actually do need a bigger military to do this, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe this is fine. Let's take a look at their PMs, if we can, a little bit here. I just don't think we're ahead on the PMs as far as we were at the start of the game. Yeah, so they're on... They have artillery, mobile artillery and line infantry. Which, if I'm not mistaken, we're, like... We're on mobile artillery and skirmish infantry, so we're only a little bit ahead of them. Uh, we do have a way bigger navy, but that's not going to make a difference here. Um, I suppose we might be able to opportunistically land them in some spots, but... I'm glad we built up the military a little bit, uh, you know, before this happened. I think if we have military up here, we're going to expand it a little. And, yeah, we might delete that other barracks, so we'll do plus 10 here. That'll be a nice little smattering. Please, my kingdom for a good event here. We've just, we have not got... We've not gotten the enactment, and we've just eaten so much dick. Really annoying. We've had several, like, 20% plus chances. Quite a lot. We are getting a bit unlucky. Proportional taxation is also a really big one, so... We got a Jalofian Uprising? This is, your timing is not good, my guy. Sengal HQ? So I know one of these states here, Togo, let's try and figure out which state in Nigeria has the, so it's not Lancashire, it's not, it's not the Highlands, it's not Midlands, East Anglia, I believe is in, uh, so it shouldn't be West County, it's not Lowlands, it's not Ulster, it's not Munster, it's not Leinster, it's not, where the frick are our two in reserve? British Guinea. Is this what this is saying? Oh, they're just garrisoned. What? These are conscripts, though. We're not talking about conscripts, my guy. Okay, I think I don't just randomly have guys. Oh, it looks like... The garrisons can handle not getting pushed. So we will not need to help out there. I guess. Oh boy. This is a painful, painful thing right now, but we are, like, we're effectively making money because the investment pool is growing, but it just looks really uncomfortable. Um, yeah, but our, our... The PMs of Great Shing have improved quite a bit, and they are coming back for their, uh... I'm nervous about losing Beijing. I really don't want to lose Beijing. So I really can't afford this war to... Or we really can't afford this war to go bad. So we will probably overbuild the military by quite a large margin here in order to make sure that the war does not go bad. Uh, let's also, as an institution, bring down law enforcement a little bit. Because we are having some problems with this. Law enforcement's not that great relative to other stuff. We can also build up a military here. I know we deleted some military we had here, but... The labor, I don't think it's cheaper, because I think it just pays, like, the average wage, but... 
And then we also might want to... We could increase this. More than happy to trade agreement with Sweden. I think maybe we want to try and get them into our market then. Didn't realize we were in such good shape with them. But we can start bankrolling them. Yeah, they're pretty close to wanting to be in our customs union. Looks like we can push them a little bit here. I suppose we could... I mean, it seems a little wild to say, but we could... Oh, I forgot. I, my mind went blank on what we could do. I'm gonna say, yeah, we're gonna bankroll them and try and get them into market. Speaking of, let's see who we can pull into the customs union or how our bankrolls are going. Uh, Transvaal, we will invite you to the customs union. Yeah, we can. We will use the obligation, and so the next step will be protectorating them. Um, in terms of Diplo annexing them, can we invite Andalusia using the obligation? We can, so then we will stop bankrolling. And Galatia, can we invite using the obligation? We can, and then we will stop bankrolling. And in Sweden, we definitely don't have an obligation yet. So, a little slow going here. The North China, let's recruit a general for the North China HQ. See, I just don't know why, okay, I'm in Senegal, we have some. I think I like the Petite Bourgeoisie, Defensive Strategies guy. Eh, well, we can have him advance. Really don't want him to be the one getting on the war, but... We're getting the battle. Got some allies in there. Hopefully the allies do not take the battles. Very quickly lose that ground. And what we really need is... Okay, wait, where, where is their capital? South China HQ. North China HQ. One of these should say China HQ. Is it all the way back here? Okay, let's check. Capital state of Great Xing. So what we probably want to do is we probably want to do a landing here at some point once we get a big enough... God, we have to expand the military, I think, like during this war. But we're already, like... Alright, can we afford in terms of legitimacy? No, we cannot afford to increase taxes. Finally, we marginalize these Anglican and Gentry. Do not want these guys marginalized, though. So let's stop bolstering here. And start bolstering them, try and get them out of marginalization. Actually, you know what we should do? We should use this to pay for more military. That's what we should do with this. So let's... Luxury clothes. Porcelain. Porcelain one gives very little, but we will run it. And then we will <clears throat> Are we running shortages of military goods? No, we're not. That's good. Don't hate importing them, but I guess we could build a little bit more up ourselves. They're not in the capital, which is somewhat risky. We actually will kick these to the front of the queue. We'll just do three. I think another one of these has the guns. Or not the guns, the ammo. Use the ammo. Ammo's doing alright. We'll just add one or two. So, in the same spot, so we have throughput bonus. 
We are advancing. The skirmish infantry is better, but I think we want to land here to try and force Japan out, and then land here to try and push the capital instead of southern infantry. And our troops should be able to hold and figure out Jaloof. Maybe? Uh, I guess maybe not. Pain. Really don't want to dilute my troops that much. I guess we'll come back to this in a bit. Of course we get this weird split that's just like crushing us. Certainly not ideal. For a war that was supposed to be easy, this war is kind of hard. North CHQ is expanding a bit, so we will get this offensive planner. And we will drop him down here. And hopefully he can do some work. It does shrink one of our fronts a bit. No, this front's fine. Okay, this guy is coming on out. Why don't we click this guy on defend front? This guy's in the middle of a battle. Winning though, so that's good. We are pushing a little bit, so that's good. Pushing here too. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, that's good. Um, people migrating to Midlands, very nice. We are making money. Interesting. But technically not, because our investment pool is draining. I think that. Since we have like 50% of our credit filled out, we don't want to deficit spend more through this, but we will expand infrastructure. Or not infrastructure. Actually, let's just check the infrastructure. Yep. You're close to needing it. We'll put some in the back of the queue for you. And then just have a little bit of a look see around and about. Because we do have a large empire. Like that needs some. That's going to have a bunch of. What's it called? Turmoil. Close to needing an in Beijing, so we'll just add it in Beijing. Some of that might be turmoil. Uh, we will recruit troops faster with this on, because we get... Oh no, we don't. thought it used to give that effect. It just gives morale recovery now, so that's fine. We will not try and recruit there. We are pushing slowly. Dangerous equipment. No, we will uh, not do that. Well, actually, maybe we should have. But, yep. Yeah, we lost the bonus from them. That bonus is really good. Um, so, we should have looked a little bit more carefully. We should be able to clean this up and then move to another front. Maybe land this guy. Should be quite nice. Are getting push, or we're failing to push, so that's fine. Still holding Beijing. Really want to keep this Forbidden City, so. That is a thing. Let's look at what's expensive on our market, what we can do about it. Steel's starting to creep up. Let's take a look, see where we have steel, and try and get some larger throughput bonus on it. It's all in Yorkshire, so we do that. And we add another rail in Yorkshire. We'll add a rail there, too. And 
just kind of trying to keep an eye on things. Sometimes the game just vomits on you uh, with these things. Nice, 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 nice. We will go steal frame buildings. Or let's go civilizing mission now. Or we're actually going to take a look. So we have mats spreaded out here. Steel railway cars would be nice. We're not running a huge subsidy payment though, so we don't really need that yet. Dynamite would be really nice though. I think I like Civilizing Mission. I want to get ahead on the colonialization. And then we need to swap over a whole bunch of PMs to be private, publicly traded, which is going to make all of our buildings less profitable, but it increases the number of capitalists. So they're less competitive, but they have more capitalists, so it pays more into the investment pool. So Overall, it's also good for keeping the capitalists powerful for a longer period of time, kind of. Um, it makes them... I think it... Decre it increases their numbers, but I think overall it decreases the amount of money they have, so uh, I think in some situations it might actually lower their clout net, but a pretty good uh, law for now. We will eventually have to go Anarchy in order to get the Anarchy in the UK achievement, which means we have to go on to workers' co-ops, but this is quite a while down the road that we will have to do that, so... Yay, and we should notice a pretty big uptick in the investment pool transfer as a consequence of that. Public trading is completely mutual beneficial. Ooh, I like tech. Give me more tech. I want the tech. Oh, my kingdom for like a decent spread, you know? Looks like we might have uh, full occupied them here. So, yeah, that's what happened. Nice. And this guy is coming in to save the day, except I think what we want him to do is to land the capital in Kansai. So... Oh, we had a general, or an admiral die, it looks like, as well. Yeah, a big old, big old boy. Mm, okay. I think we want to promote this guy, though, over him. To be the big guy on campus. This guy will now patrol the coast where he's at, and this guy can nearly invade here. Uh, he's not the guy we want to navally invade. This guy, I think, is. We want to send, yeah, Miles over. So we'll send Miles over that way. And then this guy can raid the convoys here. And that'll work out quite nicely, I think. So we no longer have the 17 stack coming here. Instead, it's going to just land the capital and look to enforce pretty quick on them. We, of course, could have landed here. Or, sorry, here and tried to push into southern Anhui. Or here and tried to push into the southern Anhui. I think this is going to be the next naval landing we try and do. But this will be good for now. Let's take a look. What's expensive in the market, my guys? Also, what's cheap? Do love to see iron being cheap. Uh, glass is a little expensive. I think our biggest glass... Ooh, we, where are we building glass, then? East Anglia and the Lowlands. So Lowlands has got an industry that they like already, but so does East Anglia. So we'll just expand in East Anglia. And let's put them on auto expand and give them a couple rails to make all that work out. And that's how we'll expand the class. We're doing it like a lot of it in East Anglia, the reason we're trying to get the, uh, I think I'm fine with a radical character taking control of the industrialist, because we might get all of the radicals together in one party, which makes keeping high legitimacy really easy. And we have most of the radicals' laws. You notice it increased our righteousness of our government, so we could increase taxes a little bit if we wanted to. Which, when we get steel buildings, that's probably what we'll do. Maybe we'll go steel buildings next. Actually, 
uh, after civilizing mission. So we're going to want to do that. We're going to want even more and more steel. Let's declare neutrality on this one. Subjugate Haiti. Well... Yeah, I don't think we can do this. We get our landing off. It's notably, it's one front right now, which is nice. It's going to split into two fronts, which is, like, super obnoxious. But I think what we do is we move this guy over, maybe, to, def to advance one of the fronts that are front. Oh, well, they're not putting anyone on this front, so we're more than happy to just keep this status quo here. Who wants peace? We do accept. We annex relief. Uh, can we push another place? No, we can't. And we do not have the fancy fancy uh, malaria attack yet. So we don't want to be colonizing in Congo proper at this point yet. This is interesting. Is there a naval invasion going on? Why is there two battles? This front doesn't have anyone on it. There shouldn't be two battles. Interesting. Well, we're pushing in through here as well. What is this? Fine with everyone being radicals and everyone being happy with each other. Put all the radicals in government. Yay. Don't want to do that, but we could do that, is what I'm trying to say. Desperately want this. <clears throat> oh, it's 0% advanced chance. Let's come off of it, then. I guess I should have been keeping a closer look on that. I don't think there's anything else we really want to switch off of. Except for that. Um, I guess we could go to... No, we don't want wage subsidies. We do want compulsory primary school. Can't swap to, swap to it. Regulatory bodies would be okay. Uh, and it would make the trade unions a little bit happier with us, which would be nice. Not sure why we have that not activated. Okay, now we're fine. Um, but how mad does this make the industrialists? So we would lose... The industrialist second bonus, but gain the trade unionist first bonus. This is pretty good. I think we just keep off of it from now, because we will... Wow, those cars are real loud. Um, we will want to... There's a lot of those cars outside. My window is closed, by the way. Uh, I assume you can still hear those cars, but... Oh, that's funny. Someone, one of our allies put a three stack there, which actually we kind of don't want because now they're going to move some more people back there, but that's funny. What is this? What? I'm trying to land? Here? What? Let's see if we have journal entries that are not here. So the Veil Protector, we can try and get them as a subject. Uh... This one's kind of hard to do. Unless we just want to full-on puppet them. <sighs> Which it makes us very, very naughty, though. So... And we can't force them into a customs union or anything like that. We'll declare neutrality on this one. Our colonization's going good for now. For now. Japan should be pretty close to capitulating. Then we should be able to land Great Qing. With our army. We are decaying our infamy quite a bit during this war, because we this war co is costing us zero infamy. Even though it's a pretty big one. We're liberating a couple, getting war reps, revoking the claim on Sakhalin is very important for getting Japan to like us, because they won't like it uh, as long as we have claim. 
or they won't like us. Let's take a look at uh, who does like us and who wants to join our market. Can we get you in the customs union? Not yet. We need the obligation. We can offer an obligation, but we don't want to pay the Diplo required to support a defensive pact with them, which is what they would use it for. We want to protect them, but we're not close yet. The ideological differences has changed quite a bit, and actually we're pretty far just in general. So we might just stop bankrolling and absolve. This bankroll is costing us quite a bit. It's costing us 10k, but we kind of like the idea of a strong Mexico making a weak United States. Um, so, for strategically, I think I'm okay with this. Um, we have an obligation with them here, uh, and we have customs union already. So let's just absolve the obligation. Oh, we're trying to diplo get them, so we do have to protect at them, which they would be willing to do if we had an obligation. Now that we have uh, made them friendly. We are uh, making relations worse with a few people. We might go after the Sikh Empire, just straight up puppet them. Um, it's kind of like what we do next. Yeah, we are pushing quite nicely into here. I think what I might do is I might put this guy to expand here. And it looks like he's going to get here just in time to stop the, uh, the auto-win battle. Should be a little careful in watching all those things. Let's take a look at some whack-a-mole. Yeah, these are... we're doubling the amount of uh, our steel production, so that should bring the price of steel down quite a bit. And it's back to hardwood. It always comes back to hardwood. We did expand all the logging we could in the uh, incorporated territories. I guess we will just go like this. And maybe we'll start incorporating a little bit more of Ireland. Let's incorporate the one that actually has some industry. So we'll incorporate you here. Which is a fast incorporation. And um, why don't we get you auto-expanding on all your mines and stuff. And then auto expand the food industries, and we will build up the food industries here as well as we have them over here. But they're still not max throughput bonus, so we will focus on this one until we get them up to max throughput. But we'll just add another 10. They're pretty profitable. We'll add a railroad preemptively or two. And we are, yeah, this expansion is going pretty well. gonna take a quick little screen here but this is uh this japan war is one i declare so many times when i'm looking to not increase the infamy just opening their market because when someone's in your market you can siphon off pops from them uh the japanese shogunate uh has generally really low standard of living combined with really high population and so getting them in your market is huge Ottomans want to enter a defense attack. This is somewhat appealing, because I don't want the Ottomans getting clapped, but I think we can just support the Ottomans. You know, they're already in our market, uh, and I think we can just support them anytime we see a play. And we just have to make sure we are not we don't go dumb dumb mode and just overlook the fact that there's a play going on. So, we're gonna say no, but thanks for the offer. Um, I think we can start bankrolling a few more countries and try and working on getting them into the market, and I think I like this block here. Generally speaking, we could go after Peru, Bolivia. They are wary of us. But they are a country that you do not want to puppet by force. So let's start bankrolling them. Let's look at our journal entry. We are getting a little bit close to getting uh, being able to confederate these guys because we have nationalism. Oh, so we can take these. We can take some of these confederation things once we get peace in our time. That's a British thing, right? Peace in our time. Uh, arming the natives. We don't ever de-escalate. We always do. If they want to fight, they'll get one. More than happy to have them pop off. Let's take a look at our GDP relative to the other. Ooh. Yeah, we're doing pretty well here. Relative to the other countries. Yeah, France. You're, you're not, your line's not going up, my friend. You gotta get, the, get that line up. 
are making money. Civilizing mission. After this, I think we go steel frame. There was another one I was kind of interested in. Human rights kind of interested me as well. Um, also going steel railway cars and dynamite is, seems pretty good. We are not not spreading any production tech. We are not not spreading any military tech. And we are not not spreading any society tech, it looks like. Um, which is often not the case in, with most of the countries I play. Because for the most part, yeah, usually they, you can be careful about how you're doing stuff and spread some stuff. So we could just go, we could just try and get ahead of time in some tech as well. Right? So... <laughs> We could just go for malaria prevention, right? Uh, and then the whole idea is we're going to be inefficient with the idea that we will get some gnat spreading back and this is a good attack to be ahead of time on. Um, I kind of like that idea. We enforce on them. I'm going to shogunate. It looks like China is falling apart here. But who can have Roderick Black? So we're gonna navally land here and shoot for the capital. Um, but I think I like this idea because the malaria tech will allow us to try and uh, cut off everyone from the Congo. If we can cut off a bunch of groups from the Congo, this will be huge for us. Let's go and make sure we have uh, interest declared. Yeah, we do. All right, we have interest everywhere. Sun never sets on our empire. Classic. We're gonna win this. And then we should enforce on them pretty shortly here. But now that they are, we're gonna start bankrolling Japan. And of course they're antagonistic for now, but what we want is we wanna get them inside of our market now that their market is open. It's a little bit of an expensive bankroll, but that's okay. In total, we are paying out a total of uh, 45k, which is maybe a little too much. Maybe we shouldn't be paying for Mexico anymore. Let's stop paying for Mexico. And let's, let's just hold on to the obligation. We don't want the defensive pact, because we're a little far from protectorating them. And uh, the money will be nice. We'll put it to good use. Are coming up with the loyalists and down with that. I think we should try and make a little bit more jobs here. But I don't think we need to expand the rural buildings. Let's get the other one. Ooh, Brazil wants to join the custom union. Perfect. So are we bankrolling them? I think we're bankrolling them currently because we hadn't gotten them in yet. So we can stop bankrolling them because we are not going to protectorate them very easily, I don't think. Yeah, they are defending the borders and have ideological differences, so we will stop bankrolling them. So now we're making a good amount of money. We have a, quite a larger market. We're going to siphon off pops from these guys. So that's all going to be good. I think I want to start bankrolling some of these guys up in this bizzle. And work on them. Let's check our other bankrolls we can absolve. So... And they're already in the Customs Union, but we do want to protectorate these guys, but we can use the obligation and protectorate them straight away. This will give us five infamy. We have less than 20, so we'll just do this. And now they are now that they are protectorate, we want to actually stop bankrolling and start damaging relations once they accept the protectorate. And Belgium wants to join the Customs Union? Of course, you can come on in. Still waiting on them to accept. I guess we'll come back to them. We know that Transvaal is the one we want. And they accept the subjugation. So now they are gonna, we're going to start damaging relations. Once they become negative, then we can just annex them. Uh, or we can, sorry, puppet them. And this way we manage to stay under the infamy of 25 and still make progress and ingress pretty quick. Uh, and we're pushing pretty, pretty strongly into China now, so they should be done with this war pretty soon. I imagine. Now, we could also bankroll them, because we can still, we can get them into Customs Union, but we'd have to improve relations first. This is maybe something we're interested in. So now, 
I normally don't do this. So the way that the system works is when you have all these tiers of text, going ahead of going toward the next one, the next tier makes it way slower. So if you see our tier three tech, it's like a year and this is five years. Um, but what we is going on is we have no natural spread because we are ahead of technology on every tech in every single group. And so what we are do, going to do is we're going to do something inefficient and try and get pull even further ahead on malaria prevention. And the reason why is because we want to cut off colonization of the Congo from other countries. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do this tech now, even though we have all these tier three techs that we haven't researched yet. So this is going to go extra slow. But what it will do is it'll allow other countries to catch up in terms of their technology and give us some natural spread, which will be quite nice. Um, to work into what we got going on because we are just ahead on all the text and so this is this seems like Reasonable to me. It is gonna be quite a bit slower um, well So here hear me out uh, Maybe we want to go steel frame buildings first and then this I Think I like that, but this is the idea we're gonna go malaria next um, Because steel frame would actually be quite good right now at this point one moment. All right, sorry, I am back. We're gonna get through this war, and then we will call it an episode. But yeah, we we have been steadily expanding the market here, you know, in a way that uh, the AI is not particularly good at, and we will be in good shape. Ooh, do we have a interest down here, down under? This is a, another place we can colonize, but this place never gets colonized. It does not have a, a malice in Nugar. There's no malice, as I recall. Oh no, it does have this, but it's not a malice towards colonization, so you can colonize it pretty quick. Uh, it is a nice pickup. One of the reasons why we want to go steel frame is because we're try starting to run a little bit of a surplus here. And notably, the surplus is also even bigger in our investment pool. So we're, our investment pool is growing really large. And so if we change to steel frame, we could use this and this huge investment pool to cover the price of the building uh, materials themselves, but not the labor. And so we want to increase the price of the building materials overall. Uh, mine, mine, mine. It's all mine. All right. So that's what we got going on. Are expanding a little bit here now that this is just not spreading let's just bump it a little bit I know we they're competing with this guy we're trying to get this guy to 51 actually let's just do it so this will be what is this this will be 41 yeah because I can do math and then that'll be 51 to maximize the throughput bonus we'll add a couple rails as well to cover them And they are going to tap out pretty quick here in China, which is going to be very nice. We are going to liberate a couple of these countries. Formosa, we're liberating for the memes. Uyghurstan, we're also liberating. I don't want to call it for the memes, but, you know, let's raise awareness for what's going on in there. You know, genocide's bad, okay? And then also the war reps. We like the war reps. Also, I mean, we're playing a game where we're talking about genocide being mad, bad, and then we're, we're doing British things, so there's that as well. Mexico is such a good one to have in the market, and we would really love for them to clap the U.S. Maybe we go after the U.S. a little and try and break them down to size. New York is a nice state to pick up as well. You can build the Statue of Liberty. They haven't, but it very importantly has is one of the few states that has this electricity output bonus, which is one of the few ways you can, uh, with just base electricity, allow that to be done. So we liberate Uyghur stand here. We will uh, start immediately bankrolling them because we want to get them inside of our market. And then we liberate Formosa, <clears throat> or the Republic of China, if you ask some people. Um, but we'll stop bankrolling them and try and get them into our market as well. Uh, just a cheeky little, uh, you know, get in. And also, this isolates these regions from the Xing market, um, which will, you know, make it easier for us to expand in these regions uh, kind of over time. I think what we want to do is we might want to protect these boyos. No, we're pretty far. Who did we... We protected a Transvaal. Are we close to being able to protect... No, not those boyos. Not these boyos. Not these boyos. 
Unfortunately, we can't release Persia. I think this is, the, or this is the case in like 1.0 or 1.1, I can't remember which, but like once a country conquers an entire other nation, you can't release it. So like, not being able to release Persia is kind of silly. Uh, we will probably be looking for a war next episode, um, this type of thing. For now, we're gonna call it. Uh, we had kind of just a big war over here uh, in order to, you know, open the Japanese market. This is a nice war you can declare in order to not really gain much infamy in the interim or the period of time in which you're fighting the war because open market is a CB that doesn't give you any infamy. And getting opening the Japanese market is really, really good because you can export goods to them. This is kind of what we'll be doing next episode slash in the interim. We're going to go to the Japanese market. We're going to export a whole bunch of finished goods to them, import a whole bunch of inputs. We do have an adjacency to their market. Although I do think we need to use convoys because this isn't incorporated. Um, but this will allow us, once we get them in the market, to siphon off the pops because they have low standard of living and they have a ton of population. And so this is a good way for expanding the population. You notice we've been steadily expanding from migration without even having a very high standard of living. And this is actually keeping our standard of living quite low. This is a unique feature of the Great Britain where you start off with just this absolute banger of a, of a country in your in your market where you have really low standard of living really high population in the east india company so you will siphon off pops from them very very quickly which keeps your standard of living low which allows all of your buildings to be hyper hyper productive because labor is cheap in the buildings although we're starting to get look at the standard of living here is pretty high so we're getting them to migrate here pretty well but this the labor low is low which allows them to be competitive you notice it's like highest where we have just overbuilt and we still have a lot of peasants in other areas we're fine with this because all of our buildings are for the most part getting employed um i say for the most part uh these ones aren't but all the other ones you know huge throughput bonuses and um, that's what we're mainly after is the throughput bonuses. I suppose next episode we will focus maybe a little bit more on trying to expand where we have still quite a lot of peasants um, and try and weed out these peasants from our incorporated states uh, and this sort of thing as a means of, because uh, the peasants will work for very little. Um, these guys do not work for very little, but they are able to employ at that higher rate because the huge throughput bonus that they have, because the encouraged manufacturing as well as Big Ben and uh, economies of scale, which allows the workforce to be paid more, which allows them to have a bigger migration pull. And so this is kind of the, the name of the game. But yeah, this episode, we had this massive, uh, massive war in Asia, which we have completed. And uh, now Japanese are out of the market. Uh, Great Shing is uh, crippled a little bit more, and we're, we'll be looking to, like, take territory off of them, slash integrate these guys at some point, I think. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and have a good one.